classic hits and today's biggest tunes. Six Towns Radio. Hello, Norman Smirthwaite. Um, first of all, uh, the big story of last week was Paul Wilde leaving the club. Was that a bombshell to you? The big story last week was Paul Wilde leaving the club, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Okay, okay. Uh, it was a big bombshell to me. Mm -hmm. It wasn't something I expected. Uh, Paul and I had been speaking for about six weeks as to what was going to happen. And it's been a very difficult six weeks because if you think about it, we've had a promotion and various other activities in that period. And I felt I needed an answer quickly, but I didn't want to put Paul in a position where he had to make an immediate decision, which may be at the detriment of the club. Yeah, I think that was the shocking thing, the fact that Port Vale was promoted and then... What was shocking about that? Well... Are you a Port Vale <laughs> supporter? I am, yes. Okay, well, there was nothing shocking about that. that was <laughs> it the was after the last ten years. Basically. That was the business plan. In fact, I mean, Wickham was surreal in that respect, yeah. because the fact that I didn't realise until I was, uh, when I was at the Football League meeting the other day, if we'd actually come second, we'd have all got medals, or the players would have done, as with the first, and the fourth uh, party get a cup. We got um, Wickham. <laughs> I'd rather had Wickham and second and some medals for the kids. Yeah. But there you go. But um, I'm I am gutted that Paul isn't here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Paul is like my baby brother. Uh, he's a good friend of mine, and I hope our friendship actually lasts through this little bit of a, um, a change in direction. Because if it doesn't last, then um, that's a bigger cost to me than what it cost to buy the football club. Yeah, because he brought you to the club. He did. He showed you what was the potential was. Well, he brought me to the Gillingham game, and um, he actually said that he would like me to invest money in something I really hadn't heard of Port Vale, the truth, mm -hmm. you know, other than a kid when you listen to the football results on a Saturday afternoon. So it was a bit of an overwhelming situation to come here and walk up the steps uh, into, the, you know, into the, the stand, as it were, into the ground, up these steps here. It's quite an imposing building, especially for League Two. Believe me, I've been to some interesting stadiums since I've been involved in the club. So, you know, he brought me here, and um, I'm gutted that he's not still here. Mm -hmm. And then seeing the promotion as you did, um, it was something you could not have expected when you took over in November. No, I think we actually assumed it would be another year. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't really part of our business plan, but this is a gift, a gift that we've taken and taken, and it's now precious to us. But uh, we weren't expecting to actually be in a situation where we find ourselves. I definitely, this wasn't part of the script. Having got promoted in six weeks later, Paul's not here. That's yeah. for sure. So you take it over now, and um, that'll be to the delight of the fans because they've really warmed to you, haven't you? Um, and they've coined the phrase the Smurf. You must have had that nickname before, then. I did. That was a, yeah. I, I, as a kid. <laughs> That's lived with me for forty odd years. So you so, don't mind that? I have no problem with people coming to Smurf. It's the other things that call me, I maybe have some objection. <laughs> but Papa Smurf, the Papa bits are getting a bit thin as well, because I'm only 52 <laughs> for most people find that a bit of... <laughs> I've had a hard life, I had three paper rounds, and I went, <laughs> I went into business when I was 19. This is the end result of it. Um, but yeah, we are where we are with that. Well, yeah. What about seeing the Smurfs at the away games? I only saw them, actually, the last three games. So, for the record, the reason I dress up in a Smurf on the Wickham game was to raise us what was a substantial amount of money for a local charity to Wickham in, in, in a particular good cause. The, part, the, uh, the contributors already knew that before I did it. Mm -hmm. Our fans may not have done because I didn't want it to get taken out of context. I'm a great believer in doing things for charity but I'm not a guy who wants to have that labelled on my chest as a man that has to seem to have self-assistency you know, self for it as it were. I, uh, so there was a reason for me doing that, other than to maybe make our fans look a bit um, more excited. There was a bigger picture for that as well. And you get on with the fans. I know you're quite hands-on when it comes to game, uh, to games, meeting up with them. The, that changed. I, if, if you look back historically, that has changed because I was concerned that because of that inexperience in football, uh, if you look going back at um, the Torquay and then the Bristol Rovers game, we really had some questions ourselves of what we should be doing to, other than the obvious things to support the club. I felt there were a minority of fans who were actually picking on Mickey and the squad and fairly. So I took the view, if I actually confront the fans face to face, as normally it's the other way around, as you, I'm sure you know, mm -hmm. if I confront them face to face and actually be part of them, if they're not happy, they will actually take it with me. And so that would take the pressure off the manager and the squad. And I think if you look back, that's one of the things that actually happened. Yeah, and uh, your relationship with Mickey, how has that grown over the season? Um, if, to be honest with you, 
Mickey, uh, I have him watched him both as a player and a manager at Coventry because that's my home city. Uh, I saw him as the Messiah. Okay, and I often see, and I saw this in my son when I, met, when I first introduced my son to Mickey after a game, how he stood up, and, and that's how I was when I first met Mickey, so in, as an owner. So there was a difficult trans, um, transition, as it were, from fan to owner. And so it's a different dialogue from talking about football to talking to the needs of the club. I get on really well with Mickey. Um, I, don't, I haven't had the, the um, day-to-day contact that uh, Paul's had because there was no need to. Uh, but that changes now, of course. But um, he's a good guy. He's a good guy for the club. He's a good ambassador for football. And he's an exceptional ambassador as far as what you can do with a limited budget. Mm-hmm. You know, we've had our own um, little Wembley game here, as it were, over the last six months. It's been a game by game. Um, but, you know, you can't say that he hasn't delivered because we are now in League One on what was a very, very meagre budget, I may add. Mm-hmm. Um, you just mentioned a commentary fan. Um, uh, I was. I'm a <laughs> Port Vale yes, fan now. Okay. So let's, let's please put that on the record. I don't want We've got that on tape now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but, yeah, you saw the emotion on the Burton Albion game when um, the Autoblast team came down. And uh, it was just a great occasion anyway. The results was just a bonus on top of that. What, the, 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 seven, the 7-1? Yeah. Well, let, so can and I share something with you? I've known Ben Robinson, the owner of Burton Album, for 30 mm-hmm. years. It was his daughter's birthday on that day, and he bought six bottles of champagne to celebrate where we were looking to, as we were going, his daughter's birthday. Unfortunately, poor Ben, bless him, he didn't open any of the champagne and he went home. I had to remind him at a football league meeting the other day because I, there was a table round of, of which most of the clubs... Port Vale had played in the last six months, and I was able to remember the results. And Ben took exception to the fact that I didn't remind the people on the table what the, we played them and what the result was, and I had to remind Ben that we beat him 7-1. <laughs> um, I was actually at the uh, uh, Burton playoffs, uh, both at Bradford and at Burton, and I was gutted that Ben wasn't at Wembley, I wish I was there the other day. But in fairness, the best team won at Burton, and the best team definitely won on Saturday. Yeah, um, somebody who was there as part of that water class team was the manager at the time, John Rudge. Oh, yes. He's just um, gone out of a job at Stoke. Mm. You think there might be something here for him at Bayer? Um, I've had lots of things to think about in the last few days. I haven't, I'm having to worry about what we've got today here mm. before I look at what we had to what we've already got. Yeah. It was a very emotional day, including for myself, uh, on the Burton Albion day, because I think that we got it, we pitched it right. We created enough excitement so the fans packed the stadium. We got the recipe of what was happening in the day, and we obviously got the result. I can't really tell you what I'm going to do long term, if anything, as far as John was concerned. Uh, it, I suspect the guy may want to just go out and enjoy his retirement. I don't know. I've not actually discussed it with him. I have enough challenges here at the moment without worrying about mm-hmm. any more onto it. Yeah, the first one is tonight. You've got a question answer. That's not a challenge. It's not. I'm seeing Mickey tomorrow. That's more of a challenge. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, let's, let's get it in context. <laughs> so, um, tonight is just a case of explaining as best I can, why I'm sitting in the chair today and Paul was in the chair last Monday. Mm-hmm. It's exciting then, the next couple of months ahead, getting ready for the next season. Yeah, nothing's changed as far as my enthusiasm. Uh, what was last Monday still was... A, so it is exciting. If you look at the, the teams we're going to be playing, I just hope that we draw Wolves as the first game at home. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. And that would be brilliant, never mind good. Yeah, and there's some good teams in League One, of course, and a yeah. lot of uh, local teams. Yes. So that'd be well, exciting. now that Yeovil's out of the phrase, we haven't got to worry about some longer distance travelling. Yeah. Yeah. But no, there's a fabulous, fabulous agenda for people who want to be entertained in the next season. And clearly I want our, our stadium to be as full as we possibly can to actually accommodate these great teams. And, uh, well, I mean, Wolves, I've already mentioned, who would have expected us to be playing Wolves? And more to the point, <laughs> Wolves would not have expected to be playing this. <laughs> and there's a Coventry, and um, sadly Coventry doesn't look like they'll be playing at the Rico Arena, which is really I'm gutted about. I, I'm hoping they can resolve their difficulties there because I, I, I had visions when I first bought the club of taking my 8 year old mother there and t- showing her what that stadium looks like. Because we know what it looks like from the outside, and I've been there a few times as a spectator. I've never been in the director's room. And so I was looking forward to that. Wearing my Port Vale scarf, the one that's the most expensive scarf any footballer has got. <laughs> the one that was knitted by one of the fans I was looking forward to going to the ground with that scarf. But maybe we'll have to be going to Walsall instead of wherever else they end up playing at. Yeah. Um, uh, one final thing. Um, the, the shirt you wore on the last game, the last home game of the season, that got ripped. Have you still got that? I have, yeah. <laughs> that needs to go in the frame. <laughs> 
I'm missing a tie in some of the vital parts of my bodily parts. So if that lady in question would like to surrender them back, I'd be great. But yeah, I've got the tie. It's been repaired, the shirt has. But it is actually next to a shirt of Tom Pope's, a limited edition of shirt of Tom Pope's, which if you haven't already bought one, you should get out there and buy it. Thank you very much. All right. Pleasure. Good stuff. Thank you. <laughs>